Hey friends, welcome back. So hormonal birth control has been linked with altered mood states, depression, anxiety, and poor responses to stress. And in this video, I wanna share with you the science about that because unfortunately many women are put on birth control and they suffer from anxiety, depression, and they think it's just that their body might be broken or that they're genetically prone to having depressed or anxious states and affect in that way. But I wanna share with you what the research actually shows. And so if someone in your life is experiencing depression, anxiety, or having suicidal ideation, and they're also concomitantly taking hormone on birth control, there's other solutions and options that you should be aware about. And I want to link a book by my friend Jolene Brighton. The title is Is This Normal? She talks about all sorts of different contraceptives and alternatives to hormonal birth control. But just recognize that studies actually show, especially young children, young women are increasingly more likely to experience anxiety, depression, and poor mental health scores. We know that women in general are more likely to experience anxiety and depression. And so when we alter their hormones by use of hormonal birth control agents, which can come in the form of the pill, also hormonal bearing IUDs, these are actually quite common among women. We know that the copper IUD does not have synthetic progestins, but most of the hormonal bearing uh, IUDs do have progestins and some also have estrogen and the use of these compounds has been shown to change the way that the human body responds to stress in women. And this is important to recognize. There was a paper here in JAMA Psychiatry titled Association of Hormonal Contraception with Depression. And unequivocally, the research shows that users of hormonal birth control of all different types, whether it's the pill, whether it's hormonal bearing IUDs, have more are more likely to be depressed. There's several studies here. This study actually is really fascinating. We're going to spend a little bit of time diving into this one. This was published last summer in Hormones and Behavior. The title here is Hormonal Contraceptive Use in Young Women, Altered Mood States, Neuroendocrine and Inflammatory Biomarkers. What was unique about this study of 388 some odd women, about half of them were on hormonal birth control, the other half were not. And they exposed these women to situations that would invoke fear or stress, having cockroaches and different insects and spiders in a controlled laboratory setting that have been shown in prior studies to induce a stress response. And it was really interesting physiologically between hormonal birth control users and non-users. And what they found is that females using hormonal birth control displayed elevated depression and stress scores. Contraceptive users had elevated c to protein as well as plasma cortisol. So we hear so much about how, well, don't intermittent fast, it raises your cortisol. Oh, don't go in the cold plunge, it raises your cortisol. High intensity interval training is bad for women because it raises cortisol. Where are the people talking about how hormonal birth control is bad because it raises cortisol? I wanna share with you this research, it's just incredible. And so we know that by changing progesterone and estrogen levels in women, that does change the entire hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis and thereby maybe increasing perceived stress in certain situations such as a stressor. So this study showed that oral contraceptives are used by millions of women worldwide, yet there are questions regarding the psychosocial and behavioral consequences of these commonly prescribed medications. Considering that sex steroid hormones can regulate neuroendocrine and behavioral responses to stress, the current study examined mood and stress symptomologies, as well as circling levels of cortisol and inflammatory biomarkers such as protein and interleukin-6 in young women. There was 388 women in the study, 47% were using some form of hormonal birth control, again, whether it's an IUD that has progestins in it or estrogens or also the pill. Women using hormonal contraceptives displayed significantly higher depression and stress scores compared to non-users, whereas no differences were found for anxiety symptoms. Moreover, contraceptive users had markedly elevated plasma cortisol and c to protein levels in comparison to non-users. Upon assessment, women at different phases of their menstrual cycle, hormonal contraceptive users displayed higher levels of cortisol compared to women in the follicular and luteal phases, in addition to higher c protein levels. Together, these findings suggest that hormonal contraceptive use is linked with exaggerated basal neuroendocrine and inflammatory profiles, which could be potentially increasing the sensitivity to the impacts of stressors and mood disturbances. So let's look at these figures here. As you can see, the non-users have a cortisol level, and this was prior to the stress induction of around 40 picograms per ml. And the hormonal birth control users have literally double the amount of cortisol. Double. This is insane. Now, this is just in a stress-neutral situation and controlling for time. So this was statistically significant here. If you look over to the right, c to protein. Basal c to protein in non-users was 1.25 milligrams per liter. In the hormonal birth control users, it was 3.69. Look at the difference in the inflammatory profiles. 
because we know that synthetic progestins and synthetic estrogens are not the same as biologically identical progesterone and estradiol that, that the ovaries actually make in the female body. So it's important to recognize that when you're taking these hormones, these are not bioidentical and they are augmenting neuroendocrine functions, stress response, as well as inflammatory responses. Really important to recognize. That's really interesting. And then if you look at the different phases here, the cortisol levels throughout the follicular phase and luteal phase and normal cycling women not on oral contraceptives and hormonal birth control uh, compared to those that are on. You see dr dramatically different uh, levels. And the reason why the scientists showed this is because cortisol levels will shift. They're going to be uh, higher in the follicular phase slightly compared to in the luteal phase, and they want to account for that. But the s significant levels of c to protein differences are just very pronounced. And I think that's uh, really important. So we're going to continue to talk about that. But friends, I just want to thank you for being here. If you're enjoying this content, please hit that like button. Be sure to share this video as a direct text message with a friend. If they're on a hormonal IUD, if they're on the pill, they're on a patch, they need to know, especially if they're feeling anxious or depressed or have a propensity for anxiety and depression because of a family history or prior trauma or things like that. You need to be aware of this. Also, a natural tool that can help calm your mental state and help you get a good night's sleep is the My Relax and Calm by Myoscience. What's unique about this micronutrient blend in a powdered drink mix is it features myo-inositol, which is really great for women, as well as taurine, L-theanine, GABA, plus you're getting potassium and L-glycine, all of which are synergistic nutrients that are restorative that can help induce a calm, relaxing physiological state. So instead of turning to alcohol or turning to stimulants in the evening time, you can use My Relax and Calm as a mocktail that can help support a relaxed mood and deep sleep. You can go over to the URL myoscience.com. That's myoscience with an X, M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com. There's over 200 reviews on this really novel formulation that helps support metabolic health as well as a calm mood and also electrolytes as well because you have the magnesium, you have the potassium, you have L-glycine, you have taurine, you have all these different nutrients that are restorative and the taste is phenomenal. Phenomenal. You can save using the code podcast at checkout over at myoscience.com and the updated and improved My Relax and Calm. So let's talk a little bit more about this. Again, this is controversial. You know, when you talk about some of the downsides of oral contraceptives or hormonal birth control, people think, oh, you just want all these women to have more babies. And it's not that. It's that there's other solutions there. And we don't want people to feel anxious and depressed. We know that one of the risk factors for heart disease, the number one cause of mortality, is depression. Yes, depression increases the risk for dying from all causes, particularly from cardiovascular disease. So if you're walking around anxious, depressed, and have an exaggerated response to life stressors, work stressors, you are more likely to not have a good quality of life. We have to weigh quality of life. And so if you are, have been using hormonal birth control and you're anxious and depressed, understand this research. This was a, a paper that was published in September of 2020 titled Hormonal Contraception and Depression, Updated Evidence and Implications in Clinical Practice. The scientists say that when Women with a history of mood affective disorders or premenstrual dysphoric syndrome are at higher risk when taking oral contraceptives for having depression after taking these compounds. And they say the main pathway responsible for menstrual cycle related changes is gamma butyric acid. So this is GABA. So we know that when individuals are going through their menstruation, we know that there's changes in the neurotransmitter GABA, which is sensitive to changes in the levels of progesterone and its metabolites, the neurosteroids. In particular, allopregnenolone is a potentiating neurosteroid with anxiolytic, that is anti-anxiety effects, as well as anti-convulsant effects with those levels changing during the normal menstrual cycle. Progestins have a different effect effect on allopregnenolone, mainly owing to the diverse androgenicity. So progestins are more likely to get converted to androgens, and they do not get converted to allopregnenolone that can increase levels of GABA in the brain. And this might be why women who take hormonal birth control, again, whether it's an oral contraceptive or the hormonal-based IUD, might be more prone to anxiety, having sleeplessness, and having problems with stress management because there's not that conversion of natural progesterone into allopregnenolone, which has been shown to increase GABA. So that's one important mechanism. The scientists say, furthermore, emotional lability, irritability, and episodes of affective disorders such as depression or mood changes are also common reasons given by women for discontinuing effective hormonal birth control, often within the first three months of use, suggesting psychologic effects of these drugs. 
Nevertheless, despite the large number of studies, there is still lack of agreement on the effect of hormonal birth control and mood disturbances with evidence for mood deterioration as well as mood improvement or stabilization because the studies are all over the place based upon someone's prior health history. They continue to say among progestins, LNG is the most studied. That is often found in IUDs, by the way. LNG is a synthetic progestin. And it's a second generation progestin that binds with a high affinity to progesterone, androgen, and mineral corticoid receptors, but not estrogen receptors. And so LNG is widely used in the currently prescribed hormonal birth control and contraceptive pills, but it's also part of the intrauterine devices like the IUDs. And so what we're seeing here is a reduction in androgens as well. And so for women that are having a hard time putting on muscle mass and if they're also concurrently using uh, hormonal birth control or having a hormonal IUD, that's something to consider. We know that muscle mass is an important factor for all-cause all mortality, cardiovascular disease, uh, blood sugar regulation, but also just having a healthy body composition. So we don't want to rob Peter to pay Paul, taking something that can decrease the androgens and also increase stress-related hormones. Now, how specifically does it affect the brain? We talked about how these synthetic progestins are not converted to allopregnanolone and therefore they don't increase GABA, but let's further dive into the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis and possibly why women who are on these oral contraceptives and or hormonal birth control in the IUD format, why they're more sensitive to stress. They say that hormonal contraceptives alter levels of neuroactive steroid hormones. Hormonal contraceptives prevent ovulation by inhibiting the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone, GNRH, from the hypothalamus luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone from the pituitary and estradiol and progesterone from the ovary, thus preventing the fluctuations in circling levels of such hormones that typically occur throughout the menstrual cycle. Furthermore, hormonal contraception prevent the increase in serum levels of pregnenolone, testosterone, and progesterone. Hormonal contraceptives alter neurotransmitters, neuropeptides, and circadian rhythms. Really important stuff. Again, for people that have issues going to bed on time or feeling like their mind is racing at two or three in the morning and they need to get all this proactivity done and then sometimes they just crash. The circadian rhythm imbalance can be induced in part by taking hormonal contraceptives. So regulation of the HBG axis, the main target of hormonal contraception, is under the control of different neurotransmitters, including GABA that we talked about earlier, glutamate, the monoamines, acetylcholine. Furthermore, the hypothalamus is also the brain area where the circadian clocks controlling biologic rhythms are located. So you screw up the circadian rhythms by impacting the HPAG axis. That is a hypothalamic pituitary adrenal gonad axis. You're inserting, whether it's through an IUD or orally, the synthetic progestins and estrogens, you're screwing up the HPAG axis and thereby also augmenting circadian rhythm function. What is another profession or what's another situation where we have an augmented impacted circadian rhythm function in shift workers? They don't call it the graveyard shift because it helps you live longer and healthier. They call it the graveyard shift because most people live a have a higher risk of cancer and, and all-cause mortality, right? Well, what if we are compromising long-term health and vitality in women by giving them hormonal contraception because we're altering the circadian rhythm because we know that the SCN, the suprachiasmatic nucleus, is in the hypothalamus. And we're augmenting this entire system with these agents and that might impact sleep, sleep regulation, and sleep quality. Really important stuff. I hope you think this is interesting because I, these papers are just fascinating. One more paper I want to share with you. Uh, this was actually just published in January. The title of this is Psychological Side Effects of Hormonal Contraception, A Disconnection Between Patients and providers. That is, patients frequently report that they feel depressed and anxious and doctors are like, mm, well, you still need to be on some hormonal contraception. So this was a survey of 188 responses that was included in this analysis. 43.6 reported experiencing mood changes as a side effect of hormonal contraception at some point in their lives. The most common reasons participants cited for discontinuing or switching contraception methods was the side effects. Participants with a history of psychiatric illnesses were more significantly likely to report uh, mood changes as a result of their hormonal contraception. That was about 61%. So if you have had depression or anxiety early in life, you are much more likely to experience worsened depression or anxiety and poor mental health after going on hormonal contraception compared to participants with no history of psychiatric illness. Among patients with a history of psychiatric illness, 38.8 respondents said that their psychiatric symptoms worsened with hormonal contraception, while only 11.2% of respondents said that their symptoms worsened with hormonal contraception.
more and more data. Here's another paper. We're not going to dive too much into this one, but hormonal contraception usage influences stress hormones on cognition and emotion. So this was yet another study that really dived into the weeds on this. A study just came out and it was an editorial review titled Hormonal Contraceptive Use in the Brain, a Call for Translational Research. So again, scientists are still sort of disentangling the effects here of hormonal contraceptives and how they impact the brain, the emotion, responses to stress, and also the inflammatory pathways and circadian rhythm health. So I think uh, the thesis of this video is if you can find alternatives to hormonal contraception, that is a good idea. What are some alternatives? A copper IUD. Uh, I know there's controversy over copper that may affect the uh, cervix and, and endometrium and, and the like, but I would make the argument that it's more benign than synthetic progestins and estrogens because we now know how they impact the HPA G-axis. We impact uh, GABA synthesis, circadian rhythm health. Also, there's the DAISY app. There's all sorts of you know different cycle uh, timers that look at core body temperature and so forth and can accurately predict fertility. So that's important. Uh, there's condoms. There's there's a lot of different options. So definitely check out Dr. Jolene Brighton's book, Is This Normal? I'll link that below. A lot of good, good options there. And a podcast we did with Courtney Swan. We talked a lot about that as well. I will link that below. So just wanted to share this video with you and most importantly, have ensure that you had access to this research because majority of women that are taking these agents have no idea that there are these associated consequences here because the doctor says, nope, we've been using these for since the 1960s. They're fine. And it turns out that we are just now learning how the consequences in terms of a neuroendocrine effect are real and they do increase or exacerbate underlying depression and possibly uh, change circadian rhythm function. So thanks for watching all the way through. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks for hitting the like button and we'll catch you on a future one down the road. Bye now.